Hey guys, and welcome back. Today's video will be showing off a script I made to simplify the swap fix I detailed in the last video, as well as give you a taste of what it can do in Grand Theft Auto V. If you're interested in why it works, would like to do it manually, or want to see how it affects Red Dead Redemption 2's performance, please go check that video out. We went from barely scraping by at 40 FPS and crashing due to a memory leak, to these results where I was able to run them all back to back with no crashes, completed on ultra, and almost double the average FPS all without FSR. The performance and experience was night and day with this fix. Stay tuned until after I show off the new process for some Grand Theft Auto 5 benchmarks, showing off that Red Dead isn't the only game to benefit from it. Special shout out to Stefan for commenting on the last video and requesting this. Hopefully it helps other people out too. Without further ado, let's see the new process. Alright, all links and commands will be in the description for easy copying. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment below and I will get to them as soon as I can. The first steps are the same as the previous process. We need to go to desktop mode, open a terminal, and make sure we've set a password with the PASSWD command if you haven't already. After that though is where my script comes in. I've created a GitHub repository for my fix at Cryobyte33 Steam Deck Swap Resizer. Either go to the GitHub page and copy the command, or grab it straight from the description below. Next, go to the terminal again and paste the command in. You can either right click paste or control shift V, then press enter. You'll be asked to provide the password you set up before. Here we can see that I added a small disclaimer that bears repeating. I am not liable if any harm comes to your deck, but the process is just as tried and true as it was last time. After agreeing to the terms, you'll be given the amount of storage you'll have available on the OS drive of your Steam Deck and asked how large the swap file should be. I limited it to somewhere between 1 and 32 gigabytes, since anything more or less than that wouldn't really make sense. When you enter the number you'd like, the script will do its thing while giving you feedback as it progresses. Note that the larger the size you chose, the longer it will take. On my 512 gigabyte deck, it took about 35 seconds to create a 16 gigabyte file. Once it's done, it'll give you commands you can run if you want to confirm that it worked, but once you see the enjoy your deck message, the whole process is complete. Yup, that's all there was to it. I'm hoping that this will make the fix much easier to run if you don't feel super comfortable in the terminal, and it should prevent any accidental DD problems. One user reported that they needed to do a reboot last time before the change took effect. I haven't noticed the same thing, but you may want to do so just to be safe, or if you notice that your performance isn't any better. As a note, the script will stay on your deck in case you want to run it again. If you do, simply use sudo dot slash swap underscore resizer dot sh in whatever directory you originally ran the command. Alright, now that I've shown it off, I wanted to answer a few questions I've gotten on the process. Sorry in advance if I butcher your name. The first thing I want to cover is this question by Stephanus. He asked if it was possible to move the swap file to the microSD card instead of the onboard SSD. Unfortunately, while we could move the swap to the microSD card, performance would be absolutely horrible, and we would also shorten the life of the card quite a bit because of their limited read-write cycles and sensitivity to heat. In addition, because of the way Valve updates the OS image, you need to reactivate the swap after each update. It is possible to use any value for the swap size, and 4GB extended my Red Dead 2 playtime before crashing by about an hour, but I think 8 to 16 gigabytes is really the sweet spot. Here we can see Mirror Durr ask if SteamOS updates will reset this fix. Since the swap file is in slash home, it should never be touched by Valve after it's imaged, so it should persist through any update. I tested this by swapping to the beta branch and back to stable, and both updates preserved the fix. StegoZ asked two questions. First, if the swap file shows up in the other category of disk usage in SteamOS. The answer to that is yes, 
and SteamOS keeps an accurate count of how much storage is left on the OS drive. The other question was how you can move the new swap file to a new SSD if you replace the original. The answer here is that you really can't, at least not easily. Valve's recovery image will create an entirely new slash home directory during the flashing process to a new SSD. That said, I'm hoping this script makes it easy enough that it won't be a major hassle to rerun it after swapping SSDs. Lastly, Shady Plumber asked if there was any way to undo the fix. That was a big reason I made this script. Now, you can just run the command again and give it a size of 1 gigabyte. After the script finishes, it'll be like the fix never happened at all. Alright, with those questions answered, let's see something else the swap fix helps. Grand Theft Auto 5. First things first. This is what happens without the fix after about 15 or 20 minutes of gameplay. I reproduced this in four separate benchmarks and in-game. Within about 10 minutes of the world ceasing to exist, the game will crash. Overall, other than the comical lack of anything, this is almost exactly like Red Dead 2's issue. Next, let me show you how I define each preset. Feel free to pause if you'd like to replicate any of my tests or see if you can get the same performance. Back to the scheduled programming. Running my fix to up the swap file to either 8 or 16 gigabytes completely removed both the glitch and the crash for me on every preset. Looking at the low and medium presets, we can see that low has a 24% boost to FPS and medium has a 14% boost. Neither of these push the Steam Deck very hard, but both could be locked at 60 FPS to have really smooth gameplay. The medium preset seemed like a good balance of fidelity and performance to me. Taking a look at the frame times, we can also see that both of the fixed options generally have much less variability. What this means is that even when the frame rates are the same, the game feels more jittery and less smooth. I think this really showcases how much the swap file fix helps Rockstar games in particular, but I'm curious to see how it affects other games in the future. Wrapping up with the GTA results, we can see that High gets a 17% boost and Ultra actually doesn't get a boost at all. That's because the Ultra preset stresses the GPU to the absolute limit and memory is no longer the bottleneck. I'll likely cover this more in a future benchmark video, but for here this will suffice. As for my recommendation, run the swap file fix no matter which preset you'd like to play on. It literally makes the game playable at all. If you want to run at a near locked 60, play on medium and limit the frame rate to 60 on the deck itself. If you're okay with sacrificing a few frames for a better image, I highly recommend locking the Steam Deck to a 40Hz refresh rate and playing on the high preset. It's very stable from my single player testing and it looks great. Alright everybody, thanks for watching another episode of my ramblings. It's been absolutely amazing to see the response from my previous videos and I wanted to help everyone as much as possible with this swap file fix. In the next video, I plan on running some more benchmarks, likely starting with some esports titles that run on the deck, and we'll see where I go from there. I have a ton of ideas for content, including, but not limited to, tutorials on Steam Deck plugins, how to get the most out of game settings, getting started with emulation, how to maximize your battery, how limiting your available CPU cores can actually improve performance in some games. And testing, in-depth battery testing, CPU governor tweaks, SSD versus microSD performance, SteamOS versus desktop mode performance, and more. So please don't forget to touch the subscribe button, send a comment, tickle the like icon, destroy the liberty bell, and whatever else YouTube makes people do these days. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.